If a cardigan's been on your bucket list for a while, but you haven't built up the courage to start, I got you, friend. Crocheting a piece of clothing isn't just fun, but it's incredibly rewarding too, so I've made it my personal mission to help you over the hump. The primrose stitch has only a two row repeat, and each is easy to memorize. So let's talk about the yarn for a second. This is a completely new to me yarn, and I really did enjoy working with it. Now this is available in a six pack, and I ordered it directly on Amazon. If you don't have access to it, it reminds me of Sheepjus, Sheepjus, Sheep, Sheepjus Stonewashed XL yarn. I absolutely love this as well. It's a cotton acrylic blend just like this. It's got some really pretty colors. That's a good substitute if you can't get your hands on this yarn. All right, so if you'd rather make a swatch to measure gauge, make a foundation chain and a multiple of three and add two more chains to the end. Otherwise though, start working up the right or the left front panel. Either will work just fine to measure your gauge. For the setup row, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet in the third chain from the hook. Skip two chains and repeat. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and repeat that to the last two chains. You'll skip one of those two and half double crochet in the last. Now chain two and turn. By the way, you'll notice I'm using a three and a half millimeter hook and that's where you should start too. You'll only need to adjust hook sizes if your gauge doesn't match. Okay, find that next chain two space and make three double crochet there. Then skip to the next chain two space and do it again. Keep going to the end of the row and you'll make a double crochet in this turning chain here. Now after this row though, you'll have a stitch here, a half double crochet, and that's where you'll work into. Chain one and turn. Now make a half double crochet in the first stitch here. This will be that stitch you double crochet into later on. Skip the next stitch and make your single crochet combo in the next stitch. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Then skip two more stitches and repeat. Keep going to the end of the row and make a half double crochet in the turning chain from the one below. Now you might be wondering why I'm making two chains instead of the standard three chains, the turning chains, for a double crochet, and that's for one main reason. The three chains, is just too tall for my regular stitch height. I'm notorious for crocheting a little tighter than other people. Now, if this isn't the case for you and three works better, then absolutely modify and chain three whenever I say chain two. Chain two and turn. Find the chain two space and make three double crochet there. I think you're probably getting the hang of this now, right? This row and the last is the entire repeat for this pattern. But before you get too far into it, you have to measure your gauge. Because gauge can be the difference between your cardigan fitting or not. We all crochet a little different and gauge is the thing that bridges the gap from my crochet style to yours. I'm gonna put a link to the ultimate gauge guide that I have typed up on my website it's a really great resource if gauge is new to you and you're sort of just figuring things out. So when you have a few rows worked up and you're ready to measure gauge, place the zero tick mark on the edge of a group of double crochets. Check to make sure you have eight groups of double crochet in four inches. If so, you're good to go. If you have more, you'll need to go down a hook size. If you have less, you'll need to go up a hook size.
That's enough about gauge. Let's talk about the cardigan and how it's constructed. So this one consists of two front panels and a back panel, each with a little bit of ribbing on the bottom to finish them off. So the back panel is as straightforward as repeating those last two rows until it reaches a certain measurement, of course, determined by your size. Now the front panels start out exactly the same. You'll chain a different number, a smaller number than you do for the back. But once you get a little more than halfway through it, you have to incorporate some shaping for the neckline. And since the stitch pattern is different on each side, the decreasing bits for the shaping of the neckline don't happen in exactly the same way from the right front to the left front panel. Both are worked to a specific measurement following rows two and three that repeat. Then for the right front panel, you'll decrease on the single crochet rows. Work the row three pattern until you have five stitches left. Then you'll skip two stitches and half double crochet in the next, leaving the last two unworked. And then work the second row as usual. So repeating that new third row, the modified one where we skip some stitches with the second row, that will make up the decrease repeat for the rest of this panel. So that's the front right panel. For the front left panel, you'll decrease on the double crochet rows. In this case, work the second row pattern to the last chain two space. Then just half double crochet in that space. And then follow up with a regular row three. Like the other front panel, you want to match the height of your back panel. So you can always lay it there for reference. So at this point, I'm about halfway done with the cardigan. I've got all three panels done. And instead of diving right into the sleeves and working the same stitch pattern again, I'm going to break up the project a little bit more and do a different stitch pattern for a little bit. It'll help with the interest factor. So all three panels are getting a band down at the bottom that will help with the fitting and the shaping. And then the neckline and the front seam will also need a little bit of a cleanup. With the right side of the cardigan facing up, Fasten on in the bottom corner, right in the foundation chain here. From here, you'll chain either seven or nine, depending on your size. Slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain. Then slip stitch to the next foundation chain over. And turn. And you'll make a slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch. chain one and turn. Slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch again. And slip stitch to the next foundation chain. So those last two rows make up the repeat for all of the bands that's within this cardigan. And you'll do this to every single panel. So back panel, both front panels, later on we'll add them to the sleeves and the neckline as well. Speaking of that neckline, let's go ahead and clean up the neckline. So you'll do this by evenly spacing a set number of single crochet along the side of these panel, the neckline side of the panel. And then we'll add a button band. Since these panels will be different for each size, the number of single crochet that you'll evenly space along the neckline edge is going to differ for each size. So you want to refer to your pattern to get that number and just do the best you can to hit that number. You don't have to be exact, 
If you're a stitch or two too many or too few, it's really not gonna make or break the project. By the way, the pattern is available completely free on my website, but if you do prefer to have a printed copy, I have that option for you too. You can pick up the PDF from my shop. Now I'll have a link to both options in the description below and in a pinned comment so it's easy for you to find. So that little cleanup line is the first step. Next, you'll grab the front left panel and fasten on in the first single crochet of your cleanup row and you'll work the band pattern here too. Now this time you'll chain either five or seven because we want this band to be a little smaller than the rest of the bands in the cardigan. And of course that'll be dependent on your size. But the repeat though is the same. Just slip stitch to the next stitch over and keep going. Before you start on the right front panel, go ahead and mark for the buttons. On the left front, add a marker to the top and the bottom like this, and you can kind of eyeball this. Then you'll take some measurements. Place a marker in the middle of the first two and the last two, and that'll be your five button markers. If you've been around this channel for a while, you've probably noticed I'm trying a slightly different format. For this video and that's because not only do i want you to be able to follow the tutorial if you decide to make this cardigan but i also want it to be entertaining for you to watch if you decide not to and maybe you'll learn something that way as well so if this video has been that for you then do me a favor and hit the like button now here's a little trick so we don't have to make the buttonhole process any more complicated than it has to be so lay the right front panel out and add markers in the same place. For the right front button band, you'll have to start at the other end based on just how you would normally crochet, but work the band pattern all the same. The only difference is here we're adding button holes. So when you get to a marker, that's where you'll make the button hole. To do that, simply chain two, skip two stitches, and keep going as usual. You'll have one more stitch to slip stitch into if you're making the smaller size like I am here. And then on the next row, when you get back to that chain two space, you'll work a slip stitch in the back loop of each of the chains. And that's all there is to it. With the buttonhole band done, adding the buttons is the next step before we get back into crocheting the sleeves. There's a little bit of shaping with the sleeves increases specifically on the single crochet row of the pattern. So when you're ready to crochet the sleeves, follow the first four rows of the sleeve for your size, which has worked the same as all of your other panels, just a little bit smaller. Row five starts the increasing, and here's what you'll do differently. Rather than work a half double crochet in the first stitch, like you're used to, make a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet in that first stitch. That'll be your first increase point. Then skip the next stitch and work the same combo. And the repeat continues from here. When you get to the last stitch, the turning chain from the previous row, that'll be your second increase point. So work your single crochet combo again. Then chain two, turn your work, and work your three double crochets in each of the chain two spaces. After you finish the double crochets in the last chain two space, you'll just chain one and turn. So this row is a little bit different than your regular double crochet row. Now, half double crochet in the first stitch, and work your single crochet combo in the next stitch. Then continue with your regular repeat of skipping two stitches and working the single crochet, chain two, single crochet combo. Now 
Now from here, the next four rows are worked the same as our regular second and third rows. So collectively, rows five through 10 make up the increase repeat. You'll work this repeat a number of times according to the size you're making. So again, you'll wanna check with the pattern. Now from there, you'll likely have a little more length to add with just that second and third row repeats. But go ahead and check with a pattern for the total length for the size you're making. Now for this sleeve to be finished, we just have to add the band, which fortunately is as straightforward as all the other bands that you've already worked. And of course, you'll wanna repeat all of that for the second sleeve. Now for everyone's favorite part, mine included, the seaming. It's really not that bad though. Start with the front and back panel and seam the shoulders. I'm using the whip stitch here because it tends to be my go-to for seams like this, but feel free to seam any way you like. And if you realize you didn't have the right sides facing in and you have to take out your seam and try again, it's easy enough to rip back out. All right, with that little goof fixed, we can move on to the arms. This time, open up the shoulder seams that you just made with the right side of the cardigan facing down. Find the middle of the sleeve and align that with the shoulder seam. Then sew that in place. Follow that up with seaming the sides and the bottom of the arms. And of course, there will be lots of little ends to weave in, but I doubt you actually want to watch me do all of that. Don't forget the pattern for this cardigan is completely free on my website. You can find a link to that in the description below, a pinned comment below, here on your screen. I'm putting it everywhere so that you don't miss it and you're able to find it. If you have any questions whatsoever, you'll more than likely find the answer right there within the pattern. Happy hooking and I'll see you in the next one.